The world of EVs is very, very big and it's only getting bigger. There's always some good news, there's always some bad news, and there's sometimes some pretty weird news. Today we've got some real ugly mail trucks, some groundbreaking deliveries from a lesser known candidate, a uh, screaming Model 3, uh, some big numbers to post there, and a GM charging up, and a little bit more. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. I have got uh, my good buddy Mark here with me. We are going to have a laugh or two, as we sometimes do. How are you, Mark? Doing well, Brian. Thanks for thanks for having me join you today. Yeah, yeah. I I had fun uh, harassing you guys in the in the live chat over. Yes, we noticed that. You noticed. Yeah. That. You noticed the future Raza throwing some quips here and there through the uh, live chat. Might have been me. Guys, if you haven't uh, had a chance to do it, go over and check out the weekly live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on uh, the Tesla Life podcast, the Tesla Life show, I guess it's called. Uh, They have fun. They share news and uh, they actually read the chat. It's very cool. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, you know, big, exciting stuff here, as always. Uh, U.S. Postal Service's Ugly Duck mail truck debuts, and carriers love it. They look terrible, but they're a big improvement. Boom. Look at that front nose of that truck. <laughs> yeah. I can understand why they call it the Ugly Duckling. It's, uh, wow. That's quite a bill sticking out of the front of that vehicle. That sends a message uh specifically through the mail it uh i think the hood shape is like that for pedestrian safety um and that window i assume is like that so you can view all of the universe at once <laughs> that is yeah that is a huge window uh huh so 60,000 of them within the next few years and a majority of them will be electric. Now, what they were supposed to be almost all electric. And of course, Oshkosh uh, stepped back on that because, by gosh, that's what they're going to do. Uh, very disappointing. But uh, what do you expect? Oshkosh isn't known for making electric cars. How on earth did they get the contract in the first place? Yeah. But okay. Yeah. I will take a success where I can get it. I, I just hope that Oshkosh can produce a valid electric vehicle that's not going to have maintenance issues that that would be a disaster if uh, they were to produce mostly evs and since they're not used to it the implementation is not spot on you know those old uh, grumman trucks and uh, other ones we've seen have had a variety of issues uh, that they shouldn't have uh, but at least they're easy to fix which is great because you're doing it all the time so yeah it's got some new features forward collision warning airbag air conditioning blind spot monitoring bumper sensors it is they have stepped up into the late 90s and i think that's great other thing i want to point out is that large windshield where you can see the entire universe i just hope that is not an easily crackable windshield because of course that's going to be an expensive windshield to replace mail trucks rarely go on the highway um so for gravel to hit it at sufficient speed. It's pretty rare to get a piece of gravel uh, on surface streets all the way up to your window, but that does look like a big, flat, breakable piece of glass. And of course, there's no way to change it. You really can't change it. So good job, I hope. (laughs) I don't know what you would do, put it, make, I don't know. So, hey, it's a victory and I'll take it. Uh, I don't know if you heard this one. This is exciting. Workhorse Group lands milestone purchase order from FedEx. Yeah, they're going to be uh, they're going to be making some workhorse uh, EVs for FedEx. What a milestone! Isn't that exciting? Yes, absolutely. The the title is perfect. Milestone. The title. <laughs> the title is perfect. Uh, and how many did they agree to purchase again? Wow, fifteen. <laughs> One five is the milestone. That's a stepping stone. That's barely a stepping stone. That is not exciting. Uh, But hey, man, I'll take it. I'll take it. You got to start somewhere. But man, like calling it a milestone, I guess that's almost like your first sale. I guess that would be a milestone. But man, you would like it to be 1500 or, you know, something large. 
500 would be kind of my minimum cutoff for a milestone. 15 is a pilot. Yeah. And it's not even a big pilot, but look at that. It's a, a real deal. So that's great. We're seeing Rivian. We're seeing Ford. Um, we're seeing Bright, which has now been uh, absorbed officially under the umbrella of General Motors. These trucks are getting out there. And the new ones, Ford, just to their e-transit van, yep. increased the range by 20%. Uh, and who knows if Tesla ever gets into this space, what they'll do. Um, and the e-transit, I did have a chance to talk with a gentleman in Vancouver about that at the Everything Electric show. And I asked him, you know, what's, what's, he said, look, we've got, we've got a few different EVs here. I'm just going to tell you what they are. The Mach-E is pretty much a bespoke ground up first principles EV. It's got some baggage from its legacy as a, as of Ford, but it is a purpose built EV. Then you've got the lightning, which is a well electrified, uh, truck. They put a lot of work into taking an existing chassis and electrifying it. And then we've got the e-transit, which is a transit van that we that we just jammed a battery and a, and a motor into. You'll notice the floor in the back is six inches higher than it should be. That's the battery. So it's just an electrified van. We're just glad we have one at all. So, again, little victories I shall take. <clears throat> But again, it's again, it's 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 first base, right? Like you've got to have your first iteration of a vehicle, and then hopefully you you weigh what uh, the market tells you, you weigh what customers tell you, and you modify, you iterate, and you come out with your second generation vehicle, and you start to propel yourself. It's exactly what it is, and uh, you know, first base is always a fun place to get to when you're just starting out. Yeah, I am told. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen this little butte. This is some very good news. Model 3 Performance holds its own racing against the M3 CS and the Mercedes C63 Hybrid. Fun little video. Yep. Tell me about it. We've got, uh, you know, you've you've got these three powerhouses going against each other. And uh, if uh, if the um, the Model 3 is just... In a straight up race where you're not prepared, you're not loading up the vehicle, it will outperform the other two immediately. And, and it's it's fun to watch. That electric car uh, is crazy fast. It's it's fun to watch. It, it'll be even more fun to drive. But uh, it uh, it is interesting that uh, they talk about the combustion vehicles if they use launch control they can get a little bit of a quicker start off the line and can hold their own a little bit better. So it's, uh, it's something that um, I think that Tesla has worked on their racing ability with the performance version of the Model 3, this refresh. And I don't see them stopping here. I think that they're just going to keep, again, the iteration of Tesla pushing out a little bit better, a little bit better. And um, the, it's it's an impressive vehicle. Well, I'm just worried because, you know, I keep hearing that electric cars are so darn heavy. The Model 3 Performance was the least powerful at 510 horses of the trio and the middle in terms of its weight at 4,000 pounds. The middle. Yep. So it's not even the heaviest of these three vehicles. Uh, and unlike the other two, there's no need to enable launch control to achieve it. Now, the Model 3 Performance does have track mode. So if you are uh, a very skilled driver, you can get a little bit more out of it. And if you want to lose tires in just 20 seconds, go ahead, use track mode. That is a good way. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, honestly, I always wonder, track mode brought to you by Goodyear. Because if, if they're not sponsoring it, they should be. <laughs> exactly. Michelin <laughs> proudly presents track mode, drift mode. <laughs> Oh, oh my man. gosh. So uh, let's see. Uh, did you know that? And I know you know because you talked about it on your show. General Motors can finally access Tesla superchargers. Uh, people who drive certain Chevys, Cadillacs, and GMCs will now be able to plug in uh, at, at some of Tesla superchargers using an adapter kit, which they have to purchase. So let's start with uh, how many of them. That was discussed on your show. Well, there certainly uh, there is a a number of different GM vehicles that can access the supercharger uh, now. Uh, 
But there is a distinction between the ones that are Altium based mm. and the ones that are non Altium based. So the Bolt, oh. for example, is distinctly different. In fact, in order for the Bolt to use the supercharge system, you've got to go to the dealership and get a software upgrade before you can even order the adapter. Then you can order it and use it. If you have an Ultium car, you've got to go into the app, you've got to order the adapter, and then you can use it. You don't need a software update. But as mentioned, Brian, it's $225 uh, to mm-hmm. buy the adapter. And that's uh, that's for either, either party. They'll now have access to 17,800 of Tesla supercharger plugs out of more than 17,000. So I'm I what I hear them saying is this is not for all of them. This is for some of them. But, I think it'd be but yes. Keep yes. in mind that um GM started uh announcing that it was only going to be I believe 12,000 originally. So that number has grown with Tesla supercharging network growing as well. So it's something that uh they're they announced the early when they announced it just after Ford, the supercharger amount was was much lower, and over time it's increased. So Tesla has allowed them to participate in the more chargers that are uh, appearing. They're stepping up, I guess, in small ways. Uh, so uh, let's see this last one. This is exciting. And guys, uh, next week we're going to do something different. We want to do a. We will answer your questions. And I know what you're thinking. I've asked questions before and they don't get answered. (laughs) The top five questions, whatever they are, on this video, the top five, as sorted by hot or top or best or whatever it is they call it on the tubes of you, um, we will answer no matter how good, bad or dumb they are. Uh, we will answer all top five, and let's see how tragic it becomes. Uh, we shall do that. Next let's week. see how tragic it becomes. <laughs> I'm I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. You know, there have been a lot of online contests where uh, they allowed people to vote, and uh, everyone would always vote uh, for their favorite celebrity, and then they would use bots, and then they would do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, one year, uh, they opened up. A sexiest woman alive to public voting. And of course, Stephen Colbert made the list. <laughs> and whenever there's there's something to be named, it seems to be named Bodie McBoatface for whatever well, reason. It's whatever McWhatever face. Yeah. <laughs> if we were gonna rename the channel, people would call it Channel McChannel Face, and we'd be stuck with it. Um, but I will point out that Macaulay Culkin uh, allowed his fans to vote on what his middle new middle name should be. And the choices were like uh, publicity stunt. And uh, there was some, I don't remember, meatball sandwich or something. But what won the one? Do you know? Did you hear which one? Won I didn't the, hear which one he picked. Oh, no. Macaulay Culkin. How about that? That became so his, his name is. Name. Yep. Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin Culkin is now his name. <laughs> <laughs> the people have spoken, and uh, so that's his middle. That, that's my middle name. So we'll see what what the people here speak about, and what we have to answer next week. Definitely no madness, sure to follow. <laughs> we'll get some good questions, I'm sure. Uh, so we have got this one here. The auto industry finally has a plan to stop electric vehicle fires. EV fires can burn for days. Firefighters have little or no training to deal with them. And conventional equipment isn't effective, but new tech is being developed, and that should make all the difference in the world. So we're getting into this because the video you and I are doing next, uh, which should come out tomorrow, though maybe a day or two later, I'm not sure. We're going to be covering just the weirdest news, the real head scratchers, the ones where you look at and you go, wow, this is just awful. So their solutions are amazing. They start by giving you a background. They even point out that, you know, uh, that EV fires are rare, very rare. Uh, Battery fires are low. In fact, very low. An analysis of the data by one insurance company suggests that more than 1,500 gas cars catch on fire per 100,000 compared to just 25. Well, those gas cars are much older. Look, (laughs) a fire is a fire, my friend. So... What we have is a lot of hopes and dreams and a lot of concepts of plans, but not actual plans. Building a fireproof-ish battery. So, yeah, let's reduce uh, some of the flammable materials. Yeah, they've already 
Already been working on that one. Uh, less fiery chemistries. Yep, LFP. Yep, we've already done that. Getting rid of the flammable liquid. Which liquid is flammable? I understand that under heat, some of them can create oxygen or release oxygen, which is not good for a fire. Right. Um, unless, unless you are a fire, mm. in which case you love it. It's the best. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Doesn't dry cathode refer to... Uh, the process by which it's manufactured? Correct. Not the battery itself. So, But solid state batteries, which will, of course, be here within two years, every two years. <laughs> every two years. <laughs> it's right around the corner. Well, it's unfortunate because Dyson was counting on it as a pillar of his electric vehicle. Yep. And that didn't come to be. And also, I think autonomy didn't come to be. And I think Apple was also leaning on technology that doesn't exist. There's a lot of times when I'll talk about uh, different um, different things I expect from upcoming vehicles, and people will say, "Well, what you what you should be thinking is," and then they name a thing that doesn't exist yet. And I, yeah, and I, yeah, and I say that's not how Tesla works. Um, it has to be it has to be on the horizon. It has to be on the horizon. Um, steer by wire wasn't novel. It had been used in vehicles before. Uh, 48 volt is not revolutionary. It's pretty straightforward. It's just different. So the things they've done are still real technologies. Uh, there's a difference between saying, I want to make my casting bigger and I want cold fusion. Yeah. The, the foundation has to be solid before you can start building on it. If it's, if it's crumbly, then guess what? It's a house of cards. Things just fall apart. <sighs> future firefighting yeah we should prepare firefighters better you think uh, are you getting paid by the word because this is a pretty yeah long that's one. kind of a kind of a uh an article that's just look, throwing softballs at future possibilities that uh don't really exist at this point if you knew nothing about electric cars uh this would be a good place to start this would be a good you know first introduction to it. Uh, but I know a few things about electric cars. Um, by the way, this video I think is coming out. Let me double check Saturday, uh, which means if you are within driving distance of Ocala, let me double check here. Mm. Yeah. If you're within driving distance of Ocala, Florida, that is aware I'm going to be. Uh, and I will share this and show you. They updated the website, make it a lot prettier. First annual. <laughs> Florida Cyberfest. This is an outdoor event. Wear your sneakers. Uh, there'll be a big old light show, beach buggy racing competition, best of show awards, food truck, live music, and presentations. Drake, get us on there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what are we doing here, man? And by the way, that's not a picture of me. Those are not pictures of me. But uh, eventually you go down far enough and boom. <laughs> the fat I man emerges. I, I Wanted Brian at the top of that slide, but maybe I was mistaken. Let me double check. I'll double check the slide. I don't see me. Oh. I must be behind the thing in this stock photo. <laughs> uh, so, uh, guys, come on out if you're if you're around. If not, you know, hey, it happens. I will also be at uh, Tesla next Thursday. Yes, Tesla in Tigard, Oregon, uh, the showroom there. Uh, Tesla's hosting us for a little event. There's going to be free food. There's going to be test drives. There's going to be a raffle with tickets that you can get for the low, low price of do a test drive. And if you bring a friend and they say you brought them, they get an extra raffle ticket. So tell Very them nice. Brian sent you so I can win more stuff that I will give away. Because that's what I do with all the stuff I get. Because I don't need more stuff. I'm good on stuff. What I, what I need is just a hug, you guys. <laughs> so what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it into them in the comments below. Stay tuned and juicy. Head on over to the Tesla Life Show. See what they're up to. See uh, if they can uh, make you learn something new. Because uh, I learn new things. There's three of them. They've got me outnumbered. And uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. And uh, cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the Flippity Flop.